year five welcome to a little bit of a math lesson um, you'll see that my random screensaver picture that my son took is a spider i hope that didn't give you any shock this is a tiny spider it's about this big absolutely minuscule which is one of the reasons why i like this photo because uh, you can see lots of detail look at this detail around there and you can see two of his i think this one's got four eyes but you know they have nearly um most of them have eight one for each leg anyway Today, what I want to talk to you about is a special kind of multiplying and dividing, which you will have come across before, but I'm kind of going to assume that you haven't. I'm going to pretend that you haven't, so that with any luck I can catch you wherever you're at with your understanding of what we do and um, move you forward. And I'm going to go all the way through to what we would need to do at the end of year six. OK, now, don't let that worry you because you're going to stop and consolidate make sure you understand at whatever point you need that's partly why i'm doing it as a video so you can just pause it and go right i need to go and practice this bit and then when you're ready come back and move on that's not an insect that's a rather beautiful swan the thing i like about this look you can see right through his nose cool um so the reason why i'm picking this is one because it's something that um, is a really good skill to have to come up to year six with um, because it's going to save you a lot of time. It's about being efficient and mathematicians really like to be efficient. They don't like to waste time and do things a long way when there's a short way. It's not a trick. It's a method. Um, the other reason is Mrs. Jones and I have noticed that when you do prodigy, I can go and look at a lot of information, a lot of data about um what you're good at and what you're not so good at as a whole class and this has come up as something that we could do with a bit of work on okay so without making too much more about it um it is when you multiply or when you divide by 10 100 or a thousand okay and this is all to do with place value so we're going to start with a little bit of um reminder about place value at the beginning of year six, we'll do more on place value. So again, don't let it worry you if this is a little bit tricky for you. Um, but we're going to start with place value and then we're going to start looking at the special case of when you multiply by a multiple of 10 to 10, 100,000, etc., etc. OK, so first of all, I'm just going to put this on the screen. Now, for the first time today, I am using a tablet and pen. Pen, tablet. Uh, I'm not used to it, so I will make mistakes. So bear with me. Apologies in advance. Um, we're all in this together in terms of, of learning about um, technology. So first of all, here is my place value grid. We're used to this, aren't we? We've got ones, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands and millions. And actually, even in year six, you only have to go up to millions. I say only. Obviously, that's quite a lot. That's actually seven place value columns. Um, but we won't need to go any further. So this is really good. This is going to really nail it before you even hit the beginning of year six. And we know, see, I've done a little dot that I didn't want to do. Um, now, this is a challenge because my little picture of me is on top of some of the um, keys that I need to use. Right. I think I've sorted that. There we go. So we know that we can have numbers one to nine in each column. And as soon as we get, if we got up to nine ones, oh, feeling so skillful here. If we got up to nine ones, we would, and then added one more, we can't have any more. In that. And what we'd do, we'd have, well, we'd have nine ones, and, not, and then we'd have 10 ones, and 10 ones, we wouldn't have that there, we'd have one lot of 10. We're familiar with that, aren't we? said I was going to start from the real beginning. The problem with that is if I draw that 110 over here, we can't tell that it's a 10, can we? It looks like a 1. Well, obviously 10 has got a very different value from a 1. So I can hear you all shouting at me, you need a place value holder. And absolutely you do. To make that look like a 10, I'd have to have a 0 as a place value holder. What that means is it's telling me this 1 is in the second column, not the first one. All right. 
So if I just get rid of all that and clear the screen up a little bit. Um, so remember that we can have up to digit nine in any one column. And after that, it's going to go to the next column to the left. And in fact, um, because this is based on a system of 10, if we multiply 1 by 10, we get 10. 1 10 is 10, isn't it? 10 ones are also 10. And if we multiply by 10 again, if we've got 10, we multiply by 10, we get to 100. And if we multiply by 10, we get to 1,000. So the whole system works on multiplying by 10 each place value column. Let's just look at that a minute. So supposing I pick up one of these, if it will let me do it, which it won't, I need to change to my little pickup tool. Um, and what did it let me? Oh, that's annoying. Doing this right a minute ago. No, it doesn't want to know, does it? Oh, there we go. No, never mind. I will just draw it and I will practice so that I'm better at this for next week. All right, so if I had one, two, three lots of one, imagine that, which obviously we know is three, so I'm also going to write that down as three over here. I've got three lots of one, and I'm multiplying those by ten. Well, if I take each one in turn, I say, well, one times ten is ten, so I've got actually one lot of 10 over here, haven't I? I haven't got that anymore. Multiplied by 10. Here's my next one. 1 multiplied by 10 is 10. So I'm going to have one lot of 10 in here. Another one multiplied by 10 is 10. So if I multiply those three ones each by 10, or indeed multiply three by 10, I'm going to get three in my tens column. And there I have, I haven't got those anymore, they've all shifted one place left, and I've got three in my tens column. But, what are you shouting at me? You are shouting, well hang on, if I wrote it down here, that three is going to look like a three. And it won't represent three lots of ten, which is what we want it to do. So what do we have to do? We have to show the person who's looking at this that this is in the tens column. And we're going to put a place value zero here so that we can see that we've got no ones and three tens. OK, so let's clear up again. While we have a little think about that. So what that means is when we're multiplying by 10, we can do things a slightly different way, slightly more efficient way. And I'm going to show you what that might look like um, when I've got a number like, let's try and do a little bit harder now. Let's think about having something like 21. Here's my 21, beautifully drawn, I think you'll agree. What if I want to do 21 times 10? So I've got 10 lots of 21. Well, let's think about it bit by bit. Let's split it up. Let's think of it as 20 times 10. And we'll think of it as 1 times 10. That's going to be easier to think about. I'm going to change colour so you can see what I'm doing here. Well, if I've got 20 times 10, 20 times 10, so that's 10 lots of 20. It's going to be 200, isn't it? Okay, 2 lots of 100. That's going to go a 2 in my hundreds column. So that's that bit done. What if I do 1 times 10? Or 1 times 10 is 10. We can do that. So that's 1 lot of 10. Hmm. Done that. And you're all going to be saying to me, oh, well, I need a place value column. Otherwise, sorry, a place value column. A place value holder to show that those digits are in the hundreds and the tens column otherwise it's going to look like that and that doesn't represent two lots of a hundred and one lot of ten that would represent 21 wouldn't it so we need to have the zero 
to show that it's the third column along. Now then, you'll be a step ahead of me by now, and you'll be saying, hang on a minute, but that two has just shifted one place to the left, and that one has shifted one place to the left. So we can see that, can't we? The two has gone into the next column, and the one has gone into the next column, because we've multiplied them by 10, and that's what these columns are all about, multiplying by 10. So, hmm, this maybe gives us a little bit of a shorter way of doing this. So maybe instead of splitting it up like this, we can say, actually, we know a quick way of doing this. And that quick way is to shift those digits along as many columns as we need to. A couple of things to notice here. Thing one, those numbers go together. Look, that two is next to that one to start with. And the two is next to the one to, to finish with. There's no zeros. Sometimes put people put zeros in the middle or all sorts of things. They all they, like, they link hands and they all shift up together or slide up together. All right. That's important. Um, it's also important to notice that um, we've just multiplied by 10 and they've moved one column. We multiplied by 10 again. Let's do that now. We're going to multiply 200 by 10. And that 2 is going to go one more column, isn't it? And we're going to multiply by 10 again. 1 times 10. That one's going to go there. And then we need two placeholder zeros. So now we've got 2,100. And actually, we could have done that all in one jump. We could have done that. Um, I'll go back to my black one. We've multiplied by 10. And we've multiplied by 10. Actually, we could, if we wanted, have done it all in one and multiplied by 100. And look, then we've removed it. I need to point to my market finger then. Then we've jumped two places. Now, this has all got a little bit too complicated, hasn't it? This has got a bit messy. So let's go back. Clear all this off. I'm still going to leave the place value chart. So, what I'm saying is, mathematicians like to do things efficiently. And while we could do this sort of thing by splitting this up and doing 20 times 10 and 1 times 10, it's a really efficient way to slide those along and add any place value um, holders that we need to. Let's do a couple together. So this time I'm going to do, um, let's have 32. And we're going to multiply it by 10. Oops, where are we? Multiply it by 10. All right, now we're multiplying it by 10. So that means we need to move it one place to the left. And I'm thinking to myself, hang on, if I move it to one place to the left, that number's going to get bigger. And I'm multiplying. So that makes sense because when I multiply numbers, they normally get bigger. You'll find some things that that doesn't work for in year six, but right now everything gets bigger. So when, when we're multiplying, we're only multiplying by 10. So it's only going to move one column. So my three is going to move one place along. My two is going to move one place along. I'm checking those digits are still together. The three and the two are still joined together, aren't they? Hang on a minute, what have I forgotten? I've forgotten my place value holder. Got to do that, because otherwise it still looks like 32. I took the column away. So we would say... Oh, oh got a bit excited there. Um, we would say, let's try that again. 32 times 10 is 320. Now then, supposing I were to do another one, let's say I do, um, let's say I did, oh, I don't know, give me a number, what should we do? Let's do 14, thanks for the suggestion. This time we're going to do, yeah, should we go stick with 10? We're going to do 14 times 10. By this stage, you'll be a step ahead of me. And you'll be going, the one moves one place to the 
the left, and 4 moves one place to the left, 14, need my 0 for a placeholder, there we are, 14 times 10 equals 100. Now, some of you might be saying to yourselves, well, why on earth doesn't she just say you put a zero on the end? I'm going to say to you now, there is a good reason why I don't say that. And that's because when we get onto decimals, which we will later on, it doesn't work for decimals. OK, so bear with me. We're not going to be putting zeros on the end. We're going to still talk about how many place columns we move the number. OK, we're going to shift it one column or two columns or three columns this way or that way. Don't start talking about adding zeros on the end or taking zeros off. Okay, so bear with me and you'll see why. Okay, now then, you can use a place value column if you want. You can use little tokens if you want, like I was going to show you over here that won't quite work. Um, but the way I like to do it in year six in your maths books is to use these grids. We use these um, the, the, the squares in your math book. So I'm just going to see if I can get some uh, square paper up. Don't know if it will. At home, I don't have the full um, version of this. You can see it's got this basic version thing here, which is quite annoying. Um, so it obviously doesn't want to find me any square paper, which is a bit annoying. Oh, backgrounds and things. Oh, look, there we go. So, what I want is a fresh one of those and something like this. Okay. This is how we would actually do that calculation and take away all that clutter and all that place value um, headings. We know them. And actually, sometimes it is helpful. I'm going to pop those in just in case. Just the hundreds, tens, ones. Actually, I might do the thousands as well. OK, so let's imagine you've got a number. This is exactly how I'd want to see you doing it in year six. Let's say we've got 47. Still sticking with small numbers. That looks like a decimal point, doesn't it? I'd better just take that away. Come then. Right. Sorry, 47. And we're going to do 47 times 10. Okay. So how many columns do we need to move it? One. I can count the zeros, actually, that's how I do it. So I've got the zero, one zero, one, one, I'm going to move it one place. Am I going to move it to the left? Yes, I am. I'm multiplying. It's going to get bigger. And I'm only going to move it one place. So that four, I'm going to think of that four as being here. It's going to be moving one place that way. Seven is going to slide right in next to it. So each digit has moved one place to the left. What do I need to do now? Bing! Zero placeholder. All right. So 47 times 10 equals 470. Done. What do I need to check? I've only moved it once. My digits, the 4 and the 7, are still squished next to each other. They slid sideways together. Not a problem. All right. There's my answer. Now, if I were you, I would pause at this point and go and practice that, just multiplying by 10. However, if you're all over this, you might want to carry on and do a little bit more because there's more to it, isn't there? Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, when we divide. OK, so I'll clear all this away. So. Still going to start with my little um, reminder about thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. It may be that you don't need those, and that's fine. Um, whoops, uh, you certainly don't need that. Um, you use whatever works for you. Oh dear, I really need to practice with this. <laughs> so, thousands, hundreds, tens, 
one. Let's try start with something like nine hundred and eighty. Now you notice I've started with one that's going to be easy. It's got a zero on the end. Um, we'll move on in a bit to look at well, what if there isn't a zero on the end? But we're going to take it slow because this is a little bit tricky. All right. So this time we're going to divide. We want to do 980 divided by 10. OK. Now then, it's all the same as multiplying by 10, except that when we're dividing, the number's going to get smaller, isn't it? So as you probably guessed, because you're smart lot, that is going to slide one place to the right going to get smaller it's only going to move one place it's all going to slide together we're not going to get any numbers in between the nine and the eight those are going to stay locked together almost like they're holding hands if you draw them holding hands there's nine's little hand oh that's supposed to be in there there's eight's little hand they're holding hands oh look at that they're going to stay together as they move along all right, so let's do them moving one place to the right. Nine is going to go from this column into this column. The eight is going to go one column to the right. The four on zero is basically going to fall off the end because he's going to move down to here. And we haven't got a column heading there yet. And we can just let him fall off. Um, so we've got 980 divided by 10 is 98. And I'm going to check to myself. I've only moved one column. Still got my 9 and my 8. They're still holding hands. Look. La -la. Obviously, friends, they're still holding hands. But this time, instead of putting in a placeholder zero, I've lost one because they've moved down that place value. OK, let's do another one. Clear that out away. Why does it always go slightly further than I want? Thousands, hundreds, tens, ones. Okay, let's have a number. Let's have a number in the thousands. So what if we've got 38 hundreds or 3,800? We can put a comma in there if we like, but actually when I'm doing this, I prefer to keep it nice and clean. Now, you've probably guessed that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 3,800 divided by 100. OK, how am I going to do that? Well, look, I've got two zeros. That tells me that I need to move two places. I've got dividing. When I divide... My number's going to get smaller. My answer's going to be smaller because I'm dividing it into smaller parts. So I'm going to move them to the right to get a smaller number. This three, don't want it in thousands anymore, it's going to move to a column that represents a lower value. OK. So how many places? Well, here's this column. It's in that three. That three is in that column, isn't it? Sorry, these are not very straight. OK. And I want that 3 to move now two columns. So I'm dividing by 100. And there's that clue. I've got two zeros, so it's going to move two columns. And there my new 3 is going to go in the 10th column. So it's moved from the 1,000th column to the 10th column. Now then, if you're like me, you won't bother doing the same thing for the 8. I could go right. The 8 has got to move two places to the right. And it's going to end up here. However, I find it easier just to think, well, I know that eight is going to be right next to the three because they're holding hands, aren't they? And it's still going to be holding hands. But I'm just going to put my eight straight there. I don't need to count along the columns each time. It's up to you. It's not a problem if you prefer that way. But that's the way that I like to do it. All right. So I think at this point, you need to go away and have a little practice of multiplying and dividing by 10 and 100 
um, and I'll, I'll have put a little worksheet together for you, um, which you'll find in the folders. OK, for people who are ready, I'm going to go and do a little bit more. I'm going to say what happens if we haven't got zeros here. What's going to happen there? All right. So if you think you're ready for that, and, and if you are, you'll know that I'm talking about decimals and the decimal place value columns. If you're ready for that, that's fine. Skip straight on to this bit. But if you're not, go and practice on those um, whole numbers with no decimal points and no decimal place value. You'll know. You know what's best for you. All right. Now, to get us ready for this, just want to have a quick look, and I got this ready earlier, at place value grid with decimals. Look, we've still got our hundreds, tens, and ones, like all zeros, whichever you want to call it. And then we've got this little friend here. This is our decimal point. Our decimal point is there to say, oh, from this moment to the right, we're talking about parts, like a fraction of a whole, okay? We're not talking about whole numbers anymore. Well, why do we need it? Well, we need it because if we had something like, um, oh, it's frozen. Come on, there we are. If we had something like this, looks like 21, doesn't it? But what if this is a 2? What, what if the value of that is a 2? And that's part of a whole, that's a tenth. Well, we need something to say, actually, this this two is in the ones column and we could have a little um, place value headings um, and these are tenths. I don't know how much of that you've done in the first. We'll do some more of that in the sixth. Um, so we have the decimal point in here to say that this is the ones column, two units, two ones, and these are smaller than a whole number. I don't want to get too distracted by that now. Um, I know that we will spend some time on that at the beginning of year six and looking at the decimal um, place value columns. All right. So there's the decimal um, point. But otherwise, it's really very similar. So let's look at that as an example. What if we had 21 and we wanted to divide it by 10? Well, we're going to do exactly the same, aren't we? We are going to move that down one column, and that's going to be there. The one is going to stay right next to the two. But look, it's crossing our decimal point. Just need to leave that there. The decimal point doesn't move. So our numbers slide down, or they won't slide up if we're multiplying in exactly the same way. It makes no difference at all, except we've got to keep that decimal point, and that stays the same place. Digits sliding up and down decimal point doesn't move. Got a little song about that. Might play it you later. How exciting I hear you cry. Okay, so 21 divided by 10 is 2.1. Little check. The numbers got smaller, 21 to 2.1. Definitely got smaller. That's right because we're dividing. And we've moved it one place. The 2 has gone from the tens into the units. So we've moved it one place. And last check, the two and the one are still friends. They are still holding hands. We're happy with that. OK, let's do another one. Let's do. Oh, I think you're ready for something a little bit harder. What if we started with something that's decimal? What if we started with 32.1? Mm. Seems to be keen on my 2.1s at the moment. Got 32.1. What are we going to do with it? Let's not rush too much. We are going to divide by 10. So divide. We're going to move it to the right so that the number gets smaller. We're dividing by 10. So we're just looking at one column. And they're just going to slide along. So... This is the way I would do it. I'd say that three is going to move one column to the right and it's going to be in there. And now instead of moving those along, I'm just going to say the two and the one, they're still holding hands. 
they're still going to stay together. All of a sudden that looks like 321. I've forgotten my decimal point. I'm going to put that in there. And I've got 3.21. So I've moved it one place because I've got one zero, one last 10 that I'm dividing by. It's got smaller. Look, it was 32. Now it's 3 point something. So it's definitely got smaller. And so my answer, I'm quite happy with that, is 3.21. I want you to look at this one a minute. Look at how that whole number has slid along all of the whole thing together. It's not going little bits here and little bits there and some of it moving and some of it not. All of it is moving. And actually, if we read the digits out, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, all the same. OK, a couple more. Let's do, should we do a multiplication with a decimal number? Yes, we will. What if we did oh, 4.39? We're getting quite tricky now. This, this, this is, um, this is year six. Okay, we're, we've arrived at the sort that you will be doing in year six. So if you're finding this tricky, don't worry. Go back and practice the multiplying and dividing by 10 with whole numbers. Really don't. I'd rather that you had that so absolutely secure rather than moving on to decimals. But I do want to show you both in case you're ready for this. Because actually, one of the main things is decimals isn't that hard, any harder. You've just got to remember the decimal point. And it doesn't move, so you haven't got to do anything with it apart from remember to put it in. Sometimes I like to remember to do it straight away. But there we go. So that's already there. Now, what should we do? We're going to take our 4.39 and let's have our questions asking us to multiply by 100. Okay, so 100, that tells me two place value columns. Okay, multiply, it's going to get bigger. So that 4 is going to move that way if it's going to be bigger. I'm going to move it that way. All right, let's do it. So the 4 is going to move two places, one, two, to the left. So the four is going to be here. Now, you could move the three and you could move the nine, if you like, or you can do it my way, which is to say I want to end up with four, three, nine, because I started with four, three, nine, so I'm going to go four, three, nine. And oh, look, actually, I don't need that. Put that ready, don't need it, um, because I haven't, in fact, got anything after the decimal point. So 4.39 times 100 equals 439. Okay. I'll put one of these um, decimal place value uh, mats in the folder in case you want it. All right. So let's go back to, this is the last little bit, I think. Let's go back to here. It looks a little bit like we'll have in your book. I wonder if I can, oh, no, I can't. Where is the... Yeah, it feels like so long since I've done any teaching of the whiteboard. I can't actually remember. Hang on, there's the rubber. wonder if it's actually inefficient. Probably not. There we go. Nearly there. So, just want to do a little bit of practice with the cells. And spend all week on this i might do another video later uh, once you've got started on this so i do like to do my place value headings um just to make sure um you probably won't need them eventually but let's say we've got hundreds and ones decimal point now this will be important when you're doing this don't have the decimal point taking up a column because look at this sometimes why would you take all of that away? Hundreds, tens, ones, decimal point, tens, and a hundreds. But now look, supposing I had, let's get a different colour pen, supposing I had three and I want to divide it by ten, that would be one column to the right, wouldn't it? And if I move it one column to the right, it goes under the decimal point, and that really doesn't make sense at all. We want to move it over here. Uh, so we just be careful. It's a really useful little tip that 
that we don't want. Um, we want our hundreds, tens, ones, decimal point on the look, and then tenths. And then, sorry, that looks like nineteenths. And then one thousandths. Okay. Well, let's choose a number. Let's have, we don't have many sevens, have we? Let's have 57.5. We do to it. We could do anything, couldn't we? We could slide it up, we could slide it down, we can do that now. Let's do 57.3 times. Oh, let's do 100. That'd be quite exciting. So we're multiplying, we're going to move it this way so that the number gets bigger. I want that 5 to represent a higher value, so it needs to go up the column multiplying by a hundred two zeros so two columns I think we know what we need to do now don't we and we want the three sorts of joining hands so multiplying by a hundred that five is going to go two columns one two five is going to end up here I want five seven three all together so five seven three oh look even though we're multiplying with decimals We've got a gap here because we haven't filled in everything from our decimal point. So when we our decimal point in, we've got a bit of a gap. I wonder what we should do there. Mm, I bet you'll step ahead of me there. We're going to put in place value holder zero so that it's clear. So the five is now in the thousands. In the thousands. Okay. I'm just going to go over that one again. It's quite tricky on this one. So we've got five in the tenth column. We've got two zeros here, so we're going to move it two places. Five is going to have a column. Seven and three are still its friends. Oh, look, it's done a clever. Ha, huh, didn't know it could do that. Um, then we haven't got our zero placeholder that we need to show that that's in the thousand. Otherwise, it looks like it's the hundreds. Let's keep that number. 5730, 5730, and now 5730, 5, let's divide it. Should we go wild? Let's divide it by a thousand. So, three zeros, we're going to move it three places. Dividing, so it gets smaller, but five is going to go to the right. So that the whole number becomes smaller. Okay, are you ready? So let's go for red because this is exciting. We are going to move the five three columns. It's in that column, so it's going to go one, two, three. That's where my five is going to go. Five, seven, three, zero. Still going to have five, seven, three, zero. I'm going to put in my decimal point, carrying it down in the same column, look. And I've got 5.730. That would probably work out. I don't need that zero anymore. I can just have 5.73. There we go. All right. So it's all about... It's all about making sure that those numbers slide as a group, still holding hands, still the same digits, the same order. Or they move this way. It's multiplying, the number's going to get bigger. It's going to move to the left. If it's dividing, I've just realised I'm doing left for me, but that's not left for you. Um, if it's dividing, the number's going to get smaller. And the number of zeros in what you're multiplying by, whether it's 10, 100 or 1,000, is going to tell you how many columns you need to move it over by. All right, I'm going to stop this one now. I'm going to put together some practice for you that's going to start at the beginning as we did, and then it's going to get harder and harder, and you're going to find your way through that. I'm going to trust you 
you can check your answers on a calculator if you like that wouldn't be a bad thing to do at all as you go to make sure like maybe do three of them make sure you're doing all right and then move on or stop there and um and practice some more on that one okay you and all them each time if you don't have squared paper that's fine you're just going to whoa you, you're going to do better straight lines than i am for sure um or are you ah, ha, ha. straight lines yeah and when you practice your multiplying and dividing by ten hundred thousand i'm going to practice using my pen and tablet because as you see i'm not very good at it anyway there's no reason why you couldn't draw one of these for yourself for every single one you might not need the decimals or you might depending on what level of question you're doing then you're going to put in your number 372 or whatever it is and use that to shift yourself along all right I'll leave you to think about what is it i've done by there if i multiplied if i divided by ten hundred thousand what am I there? Video's taken quite a while now, so I'm going to stop this and post questions. Let me know if you're getting stuck. I will happily help you. That's what I'm here for. Okay, let's see if we can nail this one year five. Thank you for listening. You've been really patient.